All right, so in the last video, we played with puppet warp to find a better position for our creature and to really make sure that the angle of their anatomy works with the terrain. So I have these three feet kind of solidly anchored on the ground, and then this one foot is lifting up. Next, we are playing with image adjustments to play with its lighting. I played with levels. Next is color balance. Color balance is about the overall color temperature of the lighting, right? And mine is already pretty close, but this can make a dramatic difference in how your creature fits in with the environment. And so I start with the midtones and I play with these sliders and I realize, you know, I do actually need a little bit more red to have this creature fit this environment. Neither of those helps all that much. Maybe a little bit more blue than yellow. Then I can go to highlights, same thing. So maybe a little bit more cyan in the highlights, just a touch. You're not trying to make it disappear into the background, you're trying to make it feel like it, it fits in, in with the lighting of the other things in the background. And a little bit of blue to those highlights and then the shadows. It's pretty good. Maybe just a touch more green on oh, then more red in the shadows helps too. And then you can always go back in your history before you did color balance and see if that made a big difference. So, or made a difference that's worth keeping. So this was it before. This is it after color balance. And it's just those, those little shifts that help the color temperature to be a little bit more red, a little bit more fitting to the, the setting. Next is the big guns, which you probably shouldn't have to use too much. And that's hue saturation. So image adjustment, hue saturation. This is what we've done before. We do levels, color balance, then hue saturation. And I'm just gonna play with the, the overall hue See if that should change, not in a dramatic way, but just a little bit off of center. And it feels like it should push a little bit to this direction rather than towards yellow. So a little bit more towards the reds. And then I can play with the intensity of the color. Sometimes this will really matter. If my background was like a frozen tundra, there's not gonna be as much saturation in the lighting. So I can already kind of freeze my character just by taking the saturation down. And if my character was like a super psychedelic planet, it might need more saturation. But for this, it might just need just a hair less. And then lightness, I wouldn't mess with here because that's better handled in levels. And I can always go back and play with levels individually. All right or any of the direct adjustments. So now we've done the direct adjustments. I'm gonna save it. There's more to lighting though than just the overall color and, and contrast. So now we're gonna do dodge and burn on the creature itself. And I usually do this on another duplicate. I am duplicating a lot. I'm gonna make this one blue. And that's because it's easy to overdo it. So dodge and burn. I'm first going to use burn. I'm going to keep the exposure at less than 30. I'm going to make it a large soft brush. So 0% hardness, pretty large brush, at least 100 pixels. And then I'm going to take just in little taps where the, the lighting looks too bright underneath my creature. I'm just doing mid-tones, like on the feet, on the belly. I'm just going to burn that down a little bit, just the mid-tones. And remember, if it takes too much saturation away, I can go to the sponge and I can saturate it just a little bit, bring some of that color back. 
You can always play with your history. I'm going to make my sponge a little bit smaller there so I can just target it. And I'm going to burn now not just the midtones, but the shadows. I'm going to try to get some of this texture to come through. But I'm going to do that very subtly because I don't want to overdo it. There we go. And then I can use dodge and I can brighten where I think the highlights need to go. So maybe a little bit, again, soft, large brush at less than 30. But I'm going to dodge a little bit where I think there should be a little brighter lighting on the creature. Maybe on its eye. On its teeth as they catch the light because we have light sources from this direction that are hitting the tree and the mountain kind of low like there's another as these suns are rising others are setting <laughs> and then we have the light from these suns that give us kind of a rim light on this side so I might brighten up these edges a little bit. Especially maybe on the ear, just in the midtones, where that light's kind of coming through. Because these ears are thin and allow the light to come through. Now I do it on a duplicate because you want to see if if what you dodged and burned makes sense. And you can see it makes a big difference. So I like what I did, so I'm going to delete the what I duplicated from. And now I am working on my blue copy. So as you go, you just want to make those decisions. The other thing is my ear looks kind of, probably from all the puppet warping I did, looks kind of soft compared to the other things in focus. So I'm going to take that ear and I'm going to use my sharpen tool. Again, with large soft brush. Because this is a powerful tool. And I'm just going to hit those edges a little bit to soften it. And I might burn the inside of the ear just a little bit in the midtones. Then I might use the sponge to bring some saturation to that. Remember, you can use the sponge to saturate or to desaturate. Okay. It's just that setting. And I can get really targeted with my dodge and burn on my creature. So if I feel like this is where we really kind of correct our creature, if I feel like the shadows need to be lightened, I can dodge the shadows in a really small area like right here on this edge of the ear and kind of take those shadows down All right, and then I might want to sharpen that edge again. So now, instead of my creature just looking like it's it's roaring, when I brought it in originally, this is what it looked like, right? Now it looks like it's kind of sneering, like sniffing. He looks a little confused, and it's like he's listening for something. They're like radar dishes, right? Seeing what his next meal is going to be. So that might relate to what he preys on, how he hides in this environment, all that. Now, one bit of lighting that seems extreme are these really, really bright spots at the edges. So for that, I'm going to use burn, and I'm going to do it to the highlights. 
and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I can just target those bright white spots. Take those down a bit. And because this is on my PNG layer, it's not going to burn any pixels that aren't there. So it's still giving me a nice cutout of my creature. So all the while, while I'm doing this, it is improving my, my overall creature project. It's improving my assignment too, as long as I don't delete anything from my creature that I might want. And there's no reason to delete anything. Now, when you burn, you do lose saturation. So if you want some of that back, you just use the sponge tool. And you could always use clone stamp and the other techniques we've, we've learned as well, right? Maybe I want to take out a little bit of the highlight on these spikes. So I go to burn. I'm just going to do the highlights. I'm just going to hit the edges of them. just so they're not so, so sharp. What's called blasted out. Or so, so bright, not sharp. It looks like I could use a little bit of sharpening though of some of these interior textures. So I'll do just a quick pass with that. And a little bit on the neck as well. Sometimes things soften, not because the reference was low quality, but because we use so much clone stamping and transparency that things kind of blur together. All right, we've done everything we can inside the creature. So now what you can do is take that creature and duplicate it and then copy. So go to take that duplicate layer of your creature and say edit copy and it will copy that layer. And then go to file new in Photoshop. And I'm just going to name this new file. Um, Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this new blank file, uh, Carl Assignment 2 Revision, because this is where I'm going to save the changes I've made to the creature before I add things around it, like its cast shadow. And I'm going to use just the clipboard size as my new file, and then I'm just going to say Edit Paste. And it will paste that layer as a PNG layer into a new folder, right? And then I can increase the canvas size a little bit so it's a little less cramped. So I'll make it eight by eight inches with a white background. And now I've got a slightly different creature design with a little bit of modifications in pose and in lighting and in dodging and burning, because now this creature is made to fit a specific environment. And sometimes that just improves your creature design overall. And it does look a little bit more finished than before. So if I wanted to, I could then save this, of course, as the PSD for my assignment to revision. And I can put it into my assignment to folder. And then if I wanted to resubmit it for a new grade in Canvas or just for my own portfolio, I'm going to save it also as a PNG. So to resubmit, I have to save it as a copy to do it as a PNG. To resubmit, all you do is send me an inbox message once you have posted something new to the Canvas assignment. And you just say, I would let the instructor know, I have resubmitted assignment two. And then I go look for it and I write back to you in that inbox message, 